Okay, this lecture is over IP version 6. Uh, we've been primarily, possibly exclusively, talking about IP version 4 up until this point. Uh, you should have covered um, IP version 6 in CIT 161. Uh, so hopefully this or most of this is review for you. But uh, first discussion is why do we need IP version 6? Or why did we need IP version 6? And the short answer is because we have assigned all of the IP version 4 address space. Uh, I usually like to go over an analogy relating to telephone numbers. Uh, used to, um, area codes had to have either a 0 or a 1 in the middle digit of the, the area code. And that gives us uh, nine nines, uh, so basically 10 million numbers. Well, there are cities like New York, Los Angeles that had to have multiple area codes uh, to cover just their population, assuming everybody only had one phone. But since then, um, I mean, I remember back in the 80s meeting somebody at school or talking to a student, and you would say, do you have a telephone number? Most of the time was the answer was yes, but sometimes it was no. They didn't have a telephone. Uh, then it got to the point where you could stop asking that question because everybody had a telephone, or, or virtually everybody. Uh, then sometimes you had a second number for a fax machine or a dial-up modem. Then cell phones came out, and households had one, possibly multiple cell phones. Uh, cars with OnStar had phone numbers. Uh, so it got where we were running out of telephone numbers. So to solve that problem, they went back and removed the restriction that that middle digit had to be a zero or a one. Uh, for example, in um, Kentucky, Western Kentucky was 502. Uh, Central and Eastern Kentucky was 606. Those were our two area codes. So what they did is they went back and for Western Kentucky, 502, Louisville with a million plus people was the largest city. So Louisville kept 502 and everybody else became 270 um, so that they had more phone numbers available to them. Now, in eastern Kentucky, um, following that, you think uh, Lexington would have kept 606. Uh, but they did not. Um, everybody outside of the Lexington area uh, became 606. And um, Lexington became 859. Now, you might think that maybe Lexington was being nice to the rural counties that don't have a lot of money, uh, that type of thing. And I've asked semester after semester, why did Lexington become 859? And nobody has answered that. But if you look at your telephone pad on your phone, 859 spells out UKY. So um, that is why we became 859. Um, so we were running out telephone numbers. We came up with a solution. Now, going back to networking, uh, this is a timeline of IP version 4. It shows when it was created in the early 80s. And then they declare that IP version 4 was exhausted in 2011. So that, that might surprise you a little, but what it means by exhausted is all the slash A address blocks have been assigned by a IANA out to uh, the regional uh, registries. Um, so if we look at that, um, 
here is an address report that was run October 18th of 2022. And it shows that in 2011, the address pool was exhausted because it was distributed out to the regional internet registries, which are last here at the bottom. And every registry has given out their blocks of IP version 4 address space, with the exception of Africa. And it's not anticipated that they'll run out until 2031. Uh, but most of the IP version 4 address space has already been divvied out. Uh, you know, I've asked this a number of times, and of course you should know that IP version 4 addresses are 32 bits. And with 32 bits, um, a bit can have two possible values, 0 or 1. So, doing a little simple statistics, if you have 32 things that can have two possible values, you have two raised to the 32nd power of, in this case, addresses, which is about 4.2 billion. So, back in the 1970s when IP was being created, they could never comprehend you know, 4 billion IP addresses being given out. That was probably the population of Earth approximately at that point in time. And even back then, they couldn't conceive of every single person having uh, an IP address or being on the Internet. Uh, but in 2011, uh, we ran out. Uh, another fact that I've asked a number of times and that you should know from 161 is IP version 6 addresses are 128 bits. So if we have 128 things that can have two possible values, 0 or 1, if we look at the combinations, that is 2 to the 128th, um, which is 3.4 uh, followed by 37 zeros, or 340 trillion 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 IP addresses that are available. Of course, like back in 1969, they couldn't comprehend of having 4 billion addresses. You know, at this point in time, it's hard to imagine that we would be using uh, 340 trillion 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 IP addresses anytime in uh, the near future. So, this is hard for us to imagine. So, a long time ago, in 161, I was trying to come up with a way to help students imagine how many IP addresses that was. So I did some calculations, and what I came up with was looking at every square meter on the surface of the Earth, land or water. And with IP version 6, we have so many IP version 6 addresses that every square meter on Earth can have 667,000 million trillion IP addresses. Um, so obviously that is a lot for a square meter. That's way more than the atoms that would be in that square meter. Um, as far as switching to IP version 6, uh, we want to talk about something called IP version 4 and IP version 6 coexistence. Um, why we have to talk about this is this following fact. We can't do something like say on this date at this time we're going to turn the internet off on the entire planet and then we're going to move everything to IV version 6 and then we're going to turn it back on and everything will be IP version 6. That's just not realistic for uh, lots of reasons. Um, so what we have to do is come up with a way, and we have come up with ways, that IP version 4 and IP version 6 can coexist on the same networks. Uh, the first is called dual stack. And basically what dual stack is, is running IP version 4 and IP version 6. Um, on the same network. Uh, so 
in your home, at your business, whatever, you're, you are running both. And that is a very common thing to do. Now, part of the problem is, yes, everything in your house may be able to talk IP version 6, including your router. But when you go outside of your home or outside your business, uh, you may not have networking infrastructure that supports IP version 6. So um, the next way to deal with that scenario is something called tunneling. And basically what you do is you transport IP version 6 packets over a tunnel. That tunnel is using IP version 4. So you might have a tunnel between two routers uh, where you take an IP version 6 packet, encapsulate it into an IP version 4 packet, send it between the routers, and when it makes it to the destination, uh, you would decapsulate that packet back into its IP version 6 uh, packet. The other thing we can do, which is very similar to uh, what we talked about, about private IPs in your home and using NAT so that you can communicate uh, with the internet. Uh, and that's translation. And we have something called NAT64, uh, which would translate um, addresses um, into IP version 4 and basically NAT your IP version 6 packets uh, behind a, a router. Um, as far as representing um, IP addresses, in IP version 4, we use decimal dotted notation, just to refresh your memory. We take the 32 bits, which is 4 bytes, we take each of those bytes and convert them into their decimal value, and we put periods between it, and, and call that the IP address. So that is just a reminder of what we mean by decimal dotted notation. Now with IP version 6 we have a 228 bits and that would be way too long to use um, decimal dotted notation. We would have 32 numbers separated by periods instead of 4. So that, that's just not really practical. So what we have is what's referred to as IP version 6 uh, preferred format. And the preferred format is eight values separated by colons. And each of those values represented by an X is four hexadecimal digits. So each of those X's would be somewhere between 0000, 0, 0, 0 and F, 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 F. Um, so we've gone from 32 decimal numbers to 32 hex numbers, which is a little better. Uh, a preferred format, full format, IP version 6 address is going to look like that. So that's still pretty long. Um, but they've come up with a couple of rules to make this a little easier to deal with or to shorten the IP version 6 addresses. The first rule is get rid of all the leading zeros. Um, so the value we started with, if we remove all the leading zeros, becomes this. So a little shorter, uh, but we still have those eight values uh, separated by colons. The second rule is that you can replace a set of consecutive zero values with two colons right next to each other, basically remove them. Now the gotcha with this is this can only be used once, because if we did it twice and we eliminated five sets of zeros, let's say, uh, how many were in the first colon colon and how many were in the second colon colon? There's no way to tell. So you can only apply this once. So in this case, or any case, you look for the most number of zeros in a row, which in this case is, um, you know, three out of the last four, the zero, zero, zero prior to the 200. So if we apply rule number two to the same IP address, it becomes this.
So a little more manageable, uh, but obviously IP version 6 addresses are going to be a little more difficult to communicate or remember than IP version 4 addresses. Um, next we're going to talk about types of IP version 6 addresses. When you say types of addresses, this can mean multiple things. It can be, you know, well, we have public or private, or uh, we have unicast, multicast, and broadcast. So it depends on what context you're looking at. But in this context, uh, we're talking about uh, unicast, multicast, and broadcast, uh, which we've gone over, and you should be familiar with what each of those are related to IP version 4. Now, in IP version 6, uh, we still have unicast. Uh, this is the same function as an IP version 4 unicast address. We have multicast addresses. These are the same function as multicast addresses in IP version 4. However, in, instead of broadcast, we have something called AnyCast. And AnyCast is an address that can be assigned to multiple devices on your network. And when a packet is sent to that address, it goes to the closest address or closest device with that address. So broadcast and AnyCast are, are a little different. Now, going back and looking at unicast addresses, there's actually, I believe, five different types of unicast addresses. So we have something called a global unicast. And this is analogous to a public IP address in IP version 4. We have something called a link local, which is actually an IP address that performs the same function as a MAC address does in IP version 4. Um, the next one is um, loopback. Uh, this is the same function as in IP version 4. It is something to test the local devices. The packet goes through the local um, TCP IP stack, doesn't actually go out on the network, and comes back. So it is testing the software and the protocol stack on the local machines. Uh, technically, in IP version 4, the address that is used most often is 127.0.0.1, but in reality, anything that starts with 127 in the first octet is uh, a loopback address. Uh, in um, IP version 6, uh, the loopback address is colon colon 1. Uh, one of the shorter IP addresses in IP version 6. The one thing that can be considered shorter is unspecified, which is all zeros, which can simply be represented as colon colon. Um, so the colon colon, I should have said this before, basically means put as many zeros here as you need to expand this IP address out to its 128 uh, bits. We do have something called a unique local address. Uh, this is the same as IP version 4 um, addresses. Uh, it is technically FC00 slash uh, 7, but it is usually divided into FC00 slash 8 and FD00 slash 8. Anything that starts with those values is considered a private or unique local address. And then we have something called an embedded um, IP version 4 address. And that's where you take the IP version 4 address of a device and split it apart and add values around it to expand it out to the 128 characters so that you have a valid IP version 6 address that was based or includes, however you want to look at it, the IP version 4 address of the device. So going back and looking at these, um, 
the global unicast address, like I said, this performs the same function as an IP version 4 public address. Currently, the only uh, global unicast addresses that have been divvied out are any address that starts with 001. Uh, so the first um, hex tets would be 2000 through 3FFF. Uh, out of that, the 2001 colon DB8 addresses are reserved for documentation and examples. So when you, like if I was making up a homework or you look at examples in a textbook, there are often going to be 2001 DB8 addresses. So doing a little math, that means they have um, divvied out uh, 42.5 trillion, 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 trillion addresses. So that is 12.5% of all the IP version 6 addresses. So it'll be a really, really, really long time, most likely, before they have to go back and divvy out another set of global unicast addresses. Um, the structure is as follows. Uh, global unicast addresses are divided into a routing prefix, a subnet ID, and an interface ID. Um, the ra global routing prefix uh, relates to the network portion of an address and is typically assigned to an ISP or a company. Uh, subnets, we normally borrow bits from the network portion to make subnets. Uh, since that was such a common thing that it had become common practice in IP version 4, that's kind of built into the structure. You have 16 bits uh, for a subnet ID, so that's a lot of subnets. Uh, that can be created within your organization. And then finally, the 64 bits for the ID interface, this is the host portion of your address. Now, link local addresses um, are for communicating on the same network. They do not get passed through routers which is the same as how MAC addresses work and are used in IP version 4. Link local addresses um, start with FE80. Um, so the first hextet uh, values are going to be from FE80 through F8BF. Now we're going to go and look at the um, format of an IP version 6 uh, packet, the first thing we're going to look at is what's called the fixed header format. This means every uh, packet has this and it looks like this. Um, we'll go through and talk about each of these fields, but every IP version 6 packet has this. Uh, the first thing it starts with is the version. Uh, so this is how your software or network card figures out how to decode the packet. Uh, in both IP version 4 and IP version 6, the first four bits are the version. Of course, it was set to 4 for IP version 4. For IP version 6, this is going to be set to 6. Um, the next thing we have in an IP version 6 packet is the traffic class. Um, this specifies, or the first six bits of this byte are used to classify what type of packet we have. The last two bits should always be 0, zero unless this is some type of local or experimental use, in which case it will be set to 1-1. One, one. And this relates to quality of service. So if you say the traffic class is voice over IP, it's going to know that this packet should have prior or higher priority than other types of packets. Uh, IP version 6 built in something called a flow label. Basically, a flow is a set of communications between the same two sockets. 
Um, again, to refresh your memory, a socket is an IP address colon port number. So if we have a conversation going between our web browser on our machine and a web server and they're transferring a number of packets, that is going to be a flow. So that's become an important way to do network diagnostics. So it was actually built into the IP version 6 uh, protocol. Uh, the next thing we have is the payload length. This is the size in bytes of the payload, including extension headers, uh, which we will talk about in a moment. Uh, we have something called the next header, uh, which is one byte that tells us what is the next thing. So this is the same as IP version 4, where we had a hex value or a set of bits that was telling uh, what type of header uh, or protocol packet we have. Uh, not sure why they changed the name, but the hop limit is basically the same thing as the time to live in IP version 4. It's a value that's decremented every time you pass through a router, and if that value ever gets to zero, then the packet um, is uh, discarded. So uh, that is an introduction to IP version 6.